Game Builder Studio. Okay, let's take a look at what we'll be creating. This is a tower defense demo, and I'll be showing you guys how to set up the various objects inside of a tower defense game, like a turret, enemies, and uh, setting up waypoints, which would be a way to mimic um, pathfinding until that's built into Game Builder Studio. It's pretty straightforward. We'll be using um, new actions like the find object within range, move action, and we'll be using some helper methods to calculate angles between objects. So th those are all great tools to use to build your games, and I'll show you how we can use that to create a tower defense project. Okay, the basic object of a tower defense game is to prevent the waves of enemies that are coming across your play field from getting or reaching their goal. So you need to put turrets or cannons or, or, or um, whatever objects that you want to have in your tower defense game in different positions to fend off the wave of enemies. So these little markers here are the turret locations of where the user will be able to mouse down and place a turret. And normally you have a menu at the bottom of where the user or the player can select from different turret types depending on where they are in your game. So just to keep this very simple, we have a basic cannon set up right here with a base and there's a, another object, object that is the cannon that's separate. And it has some logic on it as well. So just looking at this marker, we have a create turret component. And it checks for the mouse down and whether or not a turret has been placed or not. And then it will spawn a turret base, which is this red circle here, in the position relative to where the marker is. So wherever the center of this marker is, is where that base will be created. And in turn, the base will actually create the cannon. So we have a spawn action here to instantiate a cannon relative to the position or the center point of, of the uh, cannon's base. And the cannon has its center point at the edge, the left edge, so as it rotates or rotate from the center of the base. Okay, the cannon has a number of properties on it. It has two property containers, a bullet data property container and a props container. This has two properties that control whether or not this cannon is firing and the rate of fire or the speed that it's firing at. And the bullet data component will be used to copy over information from this cannon to whatever bullet that the cannon creates. So the bullet needs to know in what direction it should be moving in based on where the cannon is firing from. So that's the trajectory angle. And then of course we have a bullet speed to either have a cannon that fires slow or fires faster. Now the rules component that handles the finding of the enemies uses the find object in range action. So it's, it's just using the closest object uh, search method. And we're going we're gonna to search based off of or from the, the current cannon spatial. And we're going to look for enemy object types, and we don't need any um, object type here because this is a, a uh, this is like using uh, or filtering the objects by a tag. And we're going to search within 150 pixel radius from where the cannon is located. Now, for every object that is found within that range or within that distance this set these set of actions will be triggered and this is a group action that will first off rotate the cannon in the direction of the object that was found and we're going to use the rotate rotation of angle helper method inside of an expression and that can be found under helpers i'm sorry under math rotation of angle and all it takes is the pos position of one object and the position of another object and it returns a an angle for where you can rotate an object to face some direct a certain direction so we're using the dynamic uh, action data that's located under game.current action data 
and we're going to look for the found spatial and we're going to get its position property and we're going to use the actual spatial or the, the current spatial of the cannon we're going to use that position to determine the angle from the cannon to the found and uh, uh, the found enemy and that will be put on the rotation property of the cannon spatial that's how the cannon is able to rotate at, in the direction of the enemy and we want to store that direction in the bullet data container in the trajectory angle property because that is going to be copied over to the bullet once once the bullet is spawned and we're going to turn on firing by setting the firing property on this cannon to firing we're going to set it to true and there's a new boolean property inside of the property setters so we no longer need to use an expression because expressions are more expensive to execute so I'll just convert that to a boolean while I'm in there and that's how the cannon finds an object within range now you'll see here once firing is set to true, this component will, will execute the firing of the bullets, which will create or spawn bullets from the edge of the cannon or from the tip of the cannon. And it's, it's, going, it's firing based on this rate of fire property. It's using another group action to set the current cannon rotation. So I'm grabbing the trajectory angle of where the cannon is, has been rotated. And I'm spawning a bullet. And that's this little red dot right here. Now, the, the spawn entity allows you to copy over information from one entity to the entity that is being created with a spawn object. So that is what the bullet data components for. All the properties on this component will be copied over to the bullet props can, property container on the bullet uh, entity object. And we're going to use an offset. So we have relative to entity check because we want the bullets to spawn right at the right edge of the cannon, right at the tip. So we're going to use relative to entity and we're just going to offset about 90 pixels and I'm multiplying it by scale because the cannon has actually been scaled down so that can be left off this portion can be left off if you if you don't have any scaling on your objects and that is how the cannon fires bullets in the direction of an oncoming um, enemy and if we take a look at the bullet prop uh, bullet circle you see the bullet props and it has the same properties that were on the cannon and those properties get copied over from the cannon and this bullet will move in the direction of that trajectory it'll take the angle which is the trajectory angle pass it to the move action and it will also take the bullet speed from the property bullet props container and it'll move this this bullet in that direction and it'll eventually destroy itself after a certain amount of time 